We are here to do math in Mrs. Miller's class. Mrs. Miller's math show. With the co-host Crystal and other people here. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, that is. All right, here we go. We are. So here today, you guys, here is the deal. We are doing the most important topic that we will do in this class all year, today and over the next few days. We are doing factoring. Yeah. So let's, let's have an honest moment here. Clap if when the word factoring is out there in the ether, you have a negative reaction to it. <laughs> honest. Good. Now, clap if when the, fa the word factoring is out there, you have a positive reaction. Okay. And clap if you really just don't have a reaction. Like, it's just not. Okay, let's go. We're split. Okay, you can. That's true. Okay, well, you all are in luck because factoring is, like, the best thing ever for me. I love factoring. And, and so does Crystal. So you are in good hands for factoring lessons. So here we go. Here's how we're going to start out. Anybody know what factoring means exactly? We hear the word and it freaks us all out. Samantha? Okay. Good. Everybody give it up for Samantha. So she said finding what's what what terms have in common. And what do we do once we find terms that are in common? We factor. Factor. Let's let's run through our terms. We've got sum, difference, um, or wait, wait, add, subtract, multiply, divide. So, so far we have added and subtracted polynomials. We've multiplied. What's the one thing that is left that we haven't done? Divide. Okay, so factoring is dividing. It's like a fancy word for divide. Dividing into parts. And there are many, many ways that we're going to do this. Okay. One of the most common ways, like Samantha was mentioning, is by using what's called the greatest common factor. What is the greatest common factor? So this is something that we all have done at one point or another. Greatest common factor? What do we think? Shuggy? Good, everybody give it up for Shuggy. We're going to write a definition after we get everybody's input. Thane. Um, it's the biggest number that can go into both numbers. Okay, everybody give it up for Thane. Biggest number that goes into both numbers. So <coughs> let's, let's write a definition according to what both of you just said. The largest number or variable or combination of the two. Ooh, a variable. That can be divided out of. Okay. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Out. Do we hear that, I wonder, at home? <laughs> Sloan, would you like to get some water? Yes. Go ahead. Of all terms. Okay, so in other words, so it's, it's the largest number or variable or combination thereof. Gentlemen in the back, pay attention. That can be divided out of all the terms. So if we have something like 2x squared plus 6x, if we let's look at the numbers first, two and six. Yeah. What, is there a number that both of these can be evenly divided by? Alyssa? Two. Two. Everybody give it up for Alyssa. Yeah. So in other words, two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. They're evenly divisible. How about x squared and x? X. X. Good. Everybody give it up for yourselves. <laughs> We're participating yeah. on that one. Okay, so this two x. That is what's called the GCF, or greatest common factor. Okay, now, inside of the parentheses, what we get here, we should have two terms that come directly underneath these, and all we're doing to get those is we're taking the original term and dividing by what we factored out. So 2x squared divided by 2x, who can tell me what that comes out to? Samantha. Okay, good. Everybody give it up for Samantha. Cool. All right, questions on that? Okay. So that would be the factored version of that. All right. So 
you always, always, always want to um, look for a greatest common factor. Actually, you want to do two things. You want to make sure that your polynomial is in descending order, meaning the highest exponent first, followed by the next highest exponent, and so on. And then from there, you want to look for a greatest common factor. Okay, and then from there, we have a bunch of different methods that we're going to use. One of those methods is what's called factor by grouping. And we use factor by grouping when we have a polynomial with four terms, four terms specifically. Keep that in your mind, four terms. And you group together by two and two, three and one, or one and three. So let me show you exactly what that means. If we have something like AC plus AD plus BC plus BD, I will say that initially when you look at something like this, this has four terms again. There's one, one of the terms is right here, two, three, four. Okay, so initially when you look at this, you try factoring by grouping together two and two. Okay, what does that mean? That means you take the first two terms and group them together and they are their own group. So AC plus AD is its own group. And then you group together the second two and they have their own group, BC plus BD. And we factor those groups individually. So in other words, if we start by looking at AC plus AD, what is it that we can factor out of AC plus AD? In other words, what's in, okay, Lorenzo, what is it? A. 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 <laughs> okay, good, everybody give it up for Lorenzo. A. 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 <laughs> okay, so Lorenzo, when we factor out an A, they both have the A in common, what are we left with? C and D. C plus D, give it up for Lorenzo again. A. A. <laughs> Zach, do you want to do the second one? I'm just doing Silent Spirit. Oh, Silent Spirit, good, okay. How about B, C plus B, D, Liz? Good. And then what's in parentheses? Parentheses? C and D. Everybody give it up for Liz. Yay. Now, check out how easy this is. Do we all? If you have done this correctly, in one set of parentheses, you should have the exact same thing. So that's its own set of parentheses. And then what's in front gets its own set of parentheses. A plus B times C plus D. And that is the factor yeah. version. All right. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause. That was a very good job. Yeah. Or A. <laughs> that should just be our... Uh, <laughs> That should be our, our sal salutation to each other from now on for doing such a good job. A. All right, question A. Why would it be C plus B squared? Ah, well, it's for the same reason that in this, um, you factor out a 2x, right? And what's left over is x plus 3. Well, technically, both of these terms have a C plus D in common. So you're factoring one C plus D out of both of them, and what's left over is A plus B. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Other questions. Difference of two squares. If we break this down, we've got sum, difference, product, quotient. Difference of those four means what? Subtract. So this is subtraction of two perfect squares. And these are, these are like the easiest ones that everybody always forgets. Easiest that always, it's always the easy stuff that everybody forgets. I don't know what's up with that, but that is definitely what happens. Okay, so how does this look? If we have something like x squared minus 16, okay, there's the subtraction part is with the minus. The two perfect squares, well, x squared is a perfect square, right? And 16 <laughs> is also a perfect square. So the way that these factor out is you take the square root, you have two sets of parentheses here, you take the square root of the first one, so what's the square root of x squared? X, x that goes in the beginning, and the square root of the last term, square root of 16 is? Four. four, goes in the second part, and then this minus gets split up into a positive here, a negative there, and that is the only way that you factor that. Okay, now, can somebody tell me why, <laughs> what the significance, what they think the significance of the positive and negative is? Going from here to here, Shuggy? Well, because the, um, there's negative, negative between the two terms. Yeah. Four. All right, give it up for Shuggy. <laughs> Let me repeat what she said in case the camera didn't pick it up. Hey. <laughs> in case the camera didn't pick it up. 
She said, positive four times negative four gives us negative 16. Excellent. All right, let, let me, I want to give some extra credit out to people. 9y squared minus 25. <laughs> Who can tell me what 9y squared minus, minus, minus 25 comes out to? Samantha. All right, everybody give it up for Samantha. Hey. <laughs> okay, how about 100p squared minus, nope, 100p to the eighth, minus 81. 100p to the eighth. I'm giving this to you for a very specific reason. Crystal is very excited over there. Us math nerds, we like factoring a lot. Cool. <laughs> Good. Excellent. All right, everybody give it up for Cole. Now, why is it to the fourth? Where did he get that? He's totally right. Why? Why is it like that? Sloan? Yes, exactly, exactly. You have to add them. So you're basically splitting up the eight evenly, dividing it by two. Everybody give it up for Deanna and Sloan. Okay, questions on this? Relatively straightforward? Okay, the last type of factoring that we are going to be looking at today is perfect square trinomials. Perfect squares, all right. So perfect square, z, with three terms. That's what trinomial is, right? Three terms. So an example of this would be x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, you're going to have some problems that are trinomials where the first one is a perfect square and the last one is a perfect square that <laughs> is actually not a perfect square trinomial. So this, you want to have a way of testing it out to see whether it actually is or not. So the, what you do is you take the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term. So everybody, what's the square root of x squared? X. x. What's the square root of 25? 5. 5. And if you take those two and combine them and multiply by 2, you should end up with what's in the middle. So in other words, what's x times 2? Two? 2x two times 5 is 10x. That is the way to verify that what you have is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, it's very important. So the way that these factor, if you do that little test and you do have one, right now all the trinomials that we have are going to be perfect square in some way, um, is you, again, square root of the first one is x, square root of the last one is 5. So it's x, and then we have to figure out plus or minus. The way you figure that out is whatever the sign of the middle term is, that's what comes over here. So this should be a plus, x plus 5 squared. Can you guys see that? There. Yeah. Where did you get the two? It's always a two. Anybody know where that comes from? Okay. Let's, um, let's see. If we were to, I'm going to show you this. X plus five squared is the same thing as X plus five times X plus five, right? Okay. So if we FOIL this out, we get what? Who can tell me what we get if we FOIL this out? You don't need to do this every time. You want to do the test to make sure it is one, and that's how it factors, but I want to show you where the 2 comes from. So when we FOIL this out, what do we get? Okay, good. Go ahead, Alyssa. S squared, X squared plus? Okay, so, well, okay. Plus, we have the outer one is 5X, the inner one is 5X, and 5 times 5 is 25. There are two 5Xs here. That's the 2. Two 5Xs. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do, if I give you something like x squared minus 10x plus 25, there's only one difference between this and the last one. So what do we think this one is? Aiden, I told you I would get you at some point, right? Do you want to do this one? Yeah. Go ahead. The only difference is that Good. So how does that change what's in the parentheses when we factor it? X minus 5. X minus 5 squared. Good. Everybody give it up for Aiden. Aiden. Hey. hey. Okay. Aiden. All right. Questions? That's the extent of what we're doing today. Now let's run through a few examples. Oh. Oh. What's up? Memorize the A plus B. Yes. 
<laughs> yes, yes, and you might be quizzing. Okay, so first one. Y squared minus 11y. How do I factor that? Okay, good. Why? 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 <laughs> Alyssa? Because they're, they're, the one that they have in common is y. Good. So we factor out a y and we're left with what in common? What inside? Y minus 4. Everybody give it up for Alyssa. <laughs> okay, nobody, don't overcomplicate that. What about the next one? 3y squared minus 3y minus 9. Rebecca? Three. Good. And what do we fat, what's left inside? Uh-huh. All right, everybody give it up for Rebecca. Okay. Y squared minus 6y plus 9. What is this? We just talked about this. Samantha? Y minus 3. And if I put a y plus 3 on here, it's, you're close. You're close. Anybody want to modify that a little bit? Zach? Not quite. Not quite. What'd you say? Squared. Yeah, that's good. Y minus yeah. three squared. Everybody, give it up for Samantha. Yay. Now, uh, how can we um, how can we verify that this is because this type of factoring is a perfect square trinomial? How is it that we can verify that it actually is one again? Aiden. You would do y. Good. Uh, two. Uh huh. Good. And if we get what's in the center, then we have a perfect square trinomial. Everybody give Aiden a round of applause or an A. All right. How are we doing on questions? So we can do silent spirit if you guys want. All right. What about this one? Do we want to get people up here? Are you guys tired of having to deal with me up here? No, we don't want to get people up here. Melissa. Good. Everybody give Alyssa a round of applause. Oh, an A. Hey. <laughs> okay. Now, Y or silent spirit? One of the two. Okay. How do we verify that that's a perfect square trinomial? She factored it like it was. How do we verify that it actually is a perfect square trinomial? Liz? Good. Uh-huh. What do we have to multiply those? Times two. And do we, whoops, do we end up with what's in the middle? We sure do. All right, everybody give Liz a round of applause. Yay. Or an A, or a silent spirit. All right, cool. All right, next one. You guys want to come up? Do people want to come up? Aiden, you want to come up? Sure. Cool. Everybody give it up for Aiden. Yay. That way I can get him get music going instead of listening to my voice. Hey. was going all the way down. 
What did he do first? Desi and then Sloan? Good. He put it in descending order first. So he did y cubed minus 18y squared plus 81y. All right, give it up for Desi. Hey. Then Sloan, what did he do next? Then he, like, took out the y. Or I don't know. Good. He factored out he a factored y because out. all three terms had a y in them. That's this step. Everybody give it up for Sloan. Okay, so he had in the parentheses, he had y squared minus 18y plus 81. What did he do with that? He did so, there's a y times 2 times 9 here. What is he doing? Okay. Hey, Dan, I'm not going to ask you to explain your own work. You know what you were doing. Samantha? Good. Excellent. Everybody give Samantha a round of applause. Okay. So he was checking to see if it was a perfect square trinomial, and it was, and that's how it's factored. Where does this extra y come from down at the bottom? Somebody tell me, someone who has not volunteered yet today, somebody tell me where this extra Y came from at the bottom. There's a Y here. Where is it from? Payne? From the Y squared. Sort of, but not really. Alan? We're good. Everybody give Alan a, an A. Hey. Hey. So remember he factored out a y in the very beginning. He's continuing. He had to bring that down. You don't just leave it off just because you feel like leaving it off. Keep him as part of the problem. Brandon, is that a hand? Ah, why? Somebody tell me why it's a minus instead of a plus here. Desi. Excellent. Everybody give it up for Desi. Okay, everybody give it up for Desi. Seriously. All right. Next. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's these two and then one more, and then we're done. It's a longer, it's a longer day of notes for us today. All right. Nope. Three. Three more. After these two or three? Three total, including these two. All right. What do I do on this one? Shuggy. You want to come up? Cool. Everybody give it up for Shuggy. Yay. She is making her way to the stage. Get your narration. <laughs> that looks like a hot mess. Oh, it's really all up in my grip. Hey, you know, feel free if I'm doing this wrong. Be like, yo, yeah. you should. You should. Uh, should. Here we go. Uh huh. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh -huh. Is that a different situation? Here we go. these two y's. Because what's positive y times negative y? Um, negative That's which is right here. Very good. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yes. Cool. Other questions? All right. Almost done. We have four terms here. There is one type of factoring that I said you always do with four terms. Does anybody remember what that type of factoring is? What is it? Grouping. Cool. Let's try grouping 2 and 2 here. So if I group with 2 and 2, I'm taking t squared plus 6t, and that's my first group, and I'll factor those individually, and negative 2t minus 12, that's my second group. So in group number 1, or t squared plus 6t, shh, 
Alyssa? T. Cool. Factor out a T, and what are we left with in the parentheses? T plus U. Cool. Everybody give it up for, um, oh, I almost called you Melissa. Alyssa. Yeah. Okay. How about the second group? What do I factor out of the second group? Negative 2T, negative 12. What do they have in common? Good. Everybody give it up for Desi. Yeah. Actually, Desi, tell me what's left in the parentheses. Everybody give it up again for Desi. Yeah. Okay. So from here, what does my fully factored expression look like? <coughs> okay, so Lorenzo, it's T minus 2 times. Cool, everybody give it up for Lorenzo. I, I feel very like we're, we are um, accessing the Fonz right now. Anybody know who the Fonz is? Oh, that's surprising. I didn't think so. That's why I'm surprised some people do. Alyssa! So if there's two of the same ones, you don't like them We do not. Because what we're doing, just like what we did right here, is we took what they had in common, these two terms had in common, and factored it out. Oh. Same thing. They, these two ginormous terms have a T plus 6 in common, so we factor one of them out. Other questions? Now, everybody who is working on something else, put down whatever you're working on. Because this is one where even people who pay attention really diligently get confused on these. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. So, everybody paying attention? It's like, Ms. like Ms. Kanowski says, I want to see your beautiful eyes facing this direction. Oh, eyeballs. Eyeballs. Thank eyeballs. you. Okay. So, here we go. This is one where if we try to factor by grouping 2 and 2, <laughs> I'm going to, I'll write this down. Don't write it down. Don't write this down x squared plus 2x and 1 minus y squared. In this one, we can factor out an x and we're left with x plus 2. What would we do with this? Factor out a 1. Okay, let me ask a question. In the last factor by grouping problem, we had to have the same thing in the parentheses to be able to factor it, correct? Yeah? Okay, are we going to end up with anything that's the same in parentheses here? No. Who can explain why not? This one. Does this one have a Y in it? This one has a Y. Does this have a Y in it? Does this have an X in it? No. So this is where factoring it by 2 and 2 does not work. So let's try something else. Plus 1. Right. I'm going to cover up part of this problem and see if this rings a bell to any of you. If I cover that up, how many people think they could tell me how to factor X squared plus 2X plus 1? It was just x squared plus 2x plus 1. Clap if you think you can factor that. Okay. Somebody want to tell me what type of polynomial that is and how it's factored? Aiden. Would it be a perfect square? Excellent. How can you tell again that it's a perfect square? Because uh, if you check it out, it's uh -huh. x times 2 times 1. Good. And perfect. So how does that factor? Cool. Everybody give it up for Aiden. Okay. Now, let me back up. I'm going to do a little sidestep here so you all can see where this comes from, okay? We had a problem earlier where we had x squared minus y squared. And can somebody remind me how that factored? x squared minus y squared? Sloan? Cool. Everybody give it up for Sloan. Okay. Let's just say for the sake of this problem that that plus 1 does not exist. If that plus 1 does not exist, don't we have x squared minus y squared again up here? Yeah, yeah the only difference is the plus 1. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so if we factor x, x squared minus y squared as x plus y and x minus y, again, I'm going to choose to ignore that plus 1 for now and say that this factors to x, leave a space, plus y, x, leave a space, minus y. What do we think that is supposed to go in that space? Plus 1. Plus 1. Okay, so we just bring that 1 down, and that is the factored version of this. Okay, questions on that? Yes. Okay, if there are no questions, everybody send us off into factor practice. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey.